Hello everyone, my name is Marius and I'm going to present our short paper Enabling Degree of Interest Functions for Progressive Visualization. This paper is a collaboration between Aarhus University and Carnegie Mellon University, together with my co-authors Dominic Moritz, Adam Perra and Hans-Jörg Schulz. In my talk I will cover the following points. First I will motivate the research challenge that we address and I will do that by first providing some background on Degree of Interest Functions and Progressive Visualization. Then I will present our solution and briefly explain how our approach works. And then I will conclude with a discussion of its limitations and an outlook to future applications. So in our paper, we're combining two approaches that are currently used separately for the visual analysis of massive data sets. And the first approach are so-called degree of interest functions. Degree of interest functions are there to help us identify those parts of the data set that are actually relevant to the current task. And we usually do that by computing some task specific uh, metrics over the data. So that can be, for example, that um, some parts of the data have a certain range of values that are very interesting to the users. For example, in a car data set that might be high horsepower, or it might be that the user has interacted with certain parts of the data more than with other parts, making that more interesting. Or it could be that um, in a graph, for example, some nodes are connected to other nodes that have been interesting in the past. And what the degree of interest function does is it takes in all these different measures and then produces for every data item a number that identifies how interesting it, that item is to the current task. And that's usually done on a range between zero to one. So that gives us this, this vector that we can then use to adjust the visualization. And some common things that we often do with degree of interest functions are, for example, they, that they enable focus and context. So we can, for example, adjust the opacity of our data set so that those parts of the data stick out more that are interesting according to our degree of interest function. Or we can also use it for information hiding, which gives us more space on the screen for those parts of the data that are actually relevant. So in short, degree of interest functions are great at helping us identify parts of the data that are interesting when dealing with massive data sets. The other technique that I want to talk about is progressive visualization. Progressive visualization is often used when we're dealing with massive data sets where visualizing that data set would take a long time, too long for it to be interactive. So what we do instead is that we cut the data up into smaller pieces and then visualize those pieces over time. And the longer we wait, the more complete the visualization gets. With the idea being here that we can often identify interesting patterns in the visualization early on, and we don't have to wait until all data has been processed and therefore move on in our analysis much earlier. There's also other reasons to do this, but this is one of the main motivations. And so the question would be, why would you combine these two approaches? Well, both of them are kind of approaches for supporting the visual analysis of large data sets. Degree of interest functions are there to bring out those parts in the data that are most interesting to the task. And progressive visualization is there to help us get to the interesting parts of the data as early as possible. So there's some obvious synergies between the two that we would like to harvest by combining them. But the challenge that's kind of hindering this combination right now is that in order to compute a degree of interest function, we need access to all data in order to find out what parts of it are actually interesting. Whereas in progressive visualization, we inherently visualize only parts of the data over time, and we actually expect it to never see all data at once. And I want to demonstrate this challenge a bit more in two examples. So let's say we have this part of the data in our visualization, and we want to compute the degree of interest function over it. We can just do that. But then the question becomes, how do we compute the degree of the interest when new data comes in? And so there's two ways we could go about this. We could either compute the degree of interest function per chunk, so only looking at the current chunk, which means that we have a small number of items that we have to consider at the, every time, which means we have pass at the computation, but it also means that we get inconsistent interest values. So something that's in interesting in one chunk might not actually be interesting in the scope of all data we've visualized so far. And so per chunk computation can produce incompatible interest values. On the other hand, if we compute the degree of interest function over all visualized data, so every time we get a new chunk, we recompute, we get consistent interest values. However, the challenge here is that in progressive visualization, we're dealing with big data sets and eventually those become too big to compute the degree of interest function over it every single time 
the data changes. Data size is actually one of the main reasons for using progressive visualization in the first place. So the full recomputation of the degree of interest function also quickly becomes infeasible. And so this leads us then to the research challenge. How can we still maintain useful interest values in progressive visualization? In our short paper, we address this research challenge by proposing an approach that enables DOI functions on progressive visualizations. We do this by maintaining a model of the current user interest, in particular a regression tree. By making use of the particular properties of regression trees, we can alleviate the drawbacks of per chunk computations and full recomputation to enable DOI functions for progressive visualization. In fact, our approach benefits us along all parts of the data. First, we can compute valid interest values on new data, we can maintain valid interest values on visualized data, and we can steer the chunking on future data towards interesting items. The reason for using regression trees is their hierarchical structure, which makes them ideal for our purposes. What do I mean by that? Regression trees are usually trained on multivariate numerical data, and they take in a numeric variable as a label. In our case, this means that we use the visualized data and the interest values computed by a DOI function to produce a regression tree model. This model then consists of decision rules that partition the input dataset along its attributes. And each partition is assigned a predicted value. In our case, we basically subdivide the visualized data into partitions of similar interest. In other words, for every item in the visualized dataset, we can now apply the decision rules and predict its interest. The great thing about regression trees is that we can flip this around. Rather than determining the interest of a particular item, we can also ask which items have a particular predicted interest. To do this, we simply take the decision rules that lead to a particular leaf node. So here, for example, we get the partition that our model predicts to be of high interest to the user. We can not only use these rules on the visualized data, but what makes regression trees particularly interesting for progressive visualization is that we can also use it on data that is not visualized yet. We can do that by transforming the decision rules into a Boolean filter that we can then use to adjust the query that we use on our database. And this, of course, goes for every single leaf node. So regression trees are ideal because they allow us to predict the interest of the entire dataset without actually having to touch every item in the dataset to build that model. And in our approach, we use this trick to enable DOI functions. Our approach consists of three steps. In the first one, we take in a new chunk, select items as context, and then compute a degree of interest function. Then we update the model, compute the difference to its previous model, and update outdated interest values. And lastly, we produce a steering query that we then use to get the next chunk. And obviously, we use these three steps iteratively. The first step is that we want to compute the interest of new data. As mentioned earlier, the reason why we cannot simply compute the DOI per chunk is that this can produce incompatible interest values where something appears interesting in one chunk, but is actually not interesting in the scope of the entire visualized data set. So to overcome this, we add context to the DOI computation, which we can select using our regression tree. From every leaf node, we select some items to add to the chunk. In other words, we draw a balanced sample over the visualized data along the interest. This ensures that we include high interest and low interest items in the DOI computation as context that we might not capture otherwise. We then use the DOI function to compute the interest for these items and train a new regression tree with it. So now we've computed the interest of new data. What about previous data that was already in the visualization? Well, we need to make sure that the old interest values are compatible with the new data basically the inverse of the previous step. And again, we use the regression tree here, or rather we compare the old and the new interest models. We can find outdated interest values by again drawing a balanced sample over the leaf nodes of a regression tree and compare the predicted interest. And if they differ significantly, we update the interest for all items in a leaf node. To test if this works in practice, we conducted benchmarks in which we measured the DOI error. That's to say the difference in the DOI values shown in the visualization compared to computing the DOI function monolithically over all data in the dataset. We were able to show that with our approach, we can noticeably reduce the DOI error compared to the baseline case. For more details, please refer to our paper or the website linked at the end of this talk. 
So at this point, we have valid interest values in the visualization, but what about the stored data? I mentioned earlier that a benefit of progressive visualization is that we can control the order in which data is visualized. We want to visualize those data as early as possible that allow analysts to fulfill their task as early as possible. In other words, we want to get to the interesting data, and this is where our regression tree comes in. The standard approach to selecting new data is to draw a random sample from the database. However, we can also apply the decision rules from our regression tree to the stored data. All we need to do is slightly adjust the query we use for getting our chunks by appending the Boolean filter for high interest leaf nodes in the tree. And that way, we focus the sampling on a subspace of the dataset that we assume is most interesting. This is actually similar to our previous work where we utilize direct user input for steering, but using DOI functions, we no longer need user input. Again, our benchmarks confirm the usefulness of our approach, showing that with our model, we can increase the amount of most interesting items from the entire dataset in the visualization at a certain point in time. You can also see that we find all top 1000 most interesting items much earlier than without our model. And again, more details can be found in the paper. I want to close with some discussion points. First of all, applicability and limitations of our approach. In order for our approach to work, we need regression trees to be compatible with our data and DOI functions. This means that our approach is intended for multivariate numerical data and not so much for other data types like, for example, text. Another potential limitation is that we assume that the regression tree can separate the data into partitions based on their interest. That can at least require some feature engineering and may in the worst case still not work for all DOI functions or all datasets. And more work here is necessary to find the clear boundaries of regression trees and DOI functions. So in conclusion, we have presented a novel approach for enabling DOI functions in progressive visualization, which utilizes a regression tree model to query visualized and stored datasets, thus enabling consistent interest values over changing input data. Looking ahead, the natural question to ask is, what can we do with DOI values now that we have them available in progressive visualization? First of all, we can now of course bring established DOI-based techniques to progressive visualization as well, for example, DOI-based focus and context. In addition, we can now also start thinking about dedicated DOI-based techniques that take into account the specific characteristics of progressive visualization. One example here is that we can envision novel, more flexible steering techniques for DOI, where in the past we needed direct user input for steering, we can now also steer based on the interaction history, a priori interest, etc. Another example is that we can reduce the visual buzz of progressive visualization by tying the update rate to the interest, such that only regions of the visualization containing high interest data gets updated frequently, whereas the update of other parts of the data is kept in the background. As a first proof of concept, we also introduce ProInterest, a visual analysis tool that uses our approach to bring DOI functions to progressive visualization. It uses DOI to support the analysis in different ways. For example, we can encode the average DOI value into the color of bins on a bin scatter plot, and we can use interest-based brushing and linking. ProInterest is available under open source licenses and can serve as a platform to start future research in this space. In conclusion, we present a new approach that combines degree of interest functions and progressive visualization. It does so by allowing us to compute valid interest values on new data, maintain valid interest values on visualized data, and steer the chunking on future data. And with that, I want to end my presentation. And if you want to learn more about our approach, please visit our website. Thank you very much.